This is the 2021 Mercedes AMG E63S wagon, and it's truly the ultimate family car. It's a high performance wagon combining over 600 horsepower with car like handling and crossover SUV practicality, and it's ultra rare. It's the ultimate car enthusiast family car if you can afford it. And today, I'm going to review view it. Before I get started, big news, this Mercedes AMG E63 wagon is currently for sale, being auctioned live on Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website. This is a 2021 model, the updated AMG wagon with some great tech, some great features, and a gorgeous color, and it's for sale right now. So once you finish watching this video, click the link in the description to head over to the live auction for this AMG. AMG wagon, where you can bid on it and buy it only on cars and bids. So let's talk AMG wagon. It really is the perfect do everything car. From a practical perspective, it has the interior room and cargo space of an SUV or crossover, and it has all wheel drive for added capability, plus a lot of really nice luxury features. From an enthusiast perspective, it has a twin turbo V8, like I said, over 600 horsepower, and it's a car rather than an SUV or a crossover. So so handling is better too. It really is perfect except for the price tag. This one has a sticker price of around $120,000, but in today's crazy car world, the market price is even higher. And that means this is a lot of money for a family car, but it really is wonderful. And today I'm gonna show you everything. First, I'll take you on a thorough tour of the new AMG wagon and show you all of its quirks and features. Then I'll get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, time for the quirks and features of the new AMG E63 wagon. Now, I reviewed this car when it first came out four years ago in its latest body style, four years ago this week, actually, but it has been heavily updated for 2021. So I figured I'd go through everything again and start with the 21 updates, and that means starting with the front end, which is totally different from the outgoing model. It's more aggressive. The grill has gotten larger and more muscular and more grr, tough AMG car. So you have a larger grille and just a generally more aggressive front end. You also have updated headlights. These are actually a little smaller than the ones in the outgoing model, but they fit Mercedes' latest design language and theme. The look and shape of these headlights has been incorporated into most new Mercedes models, and for 21, it's on the new E-Class too. But the changes to the outside of the latest AMG wagon are actually pretty minimal compared to what's changed inside, where you have some fairly significant upgrades. Now, one of them is the latest MBUX infotainment system, and I'll get more into that in a minute and show you some of its quirks and features, but that's a new upgrade for 21. And with it comes a redesigned controller because the latest MBUX uses this controller, which is different from the prior one, and that means there's been some changes and upgrades to the center console and center control stack to go along with this new sort of smaller, sleeker controller for the infotainment system. All that's pretty good, but probably the best change for 21 has been to the steering wheel. For one thing, it looks a lot better than the outgoing model steering wheel. You can see this beautiful modern look. And it is now capacitive touch, which is a bigger deal than you might think. When you're using the driver assist technology and the car is accelerating and braking and steering for you, the prior model required you to like jiggle the steering wheel every so often so it knew you were still there. Now, because it's capacitive touch, you can just keep a hand on the steering wheel. You don't actually have to move it. It will recognize that your hand is there and then it will just keep steering for you since it knows you're paying attention. That is a pretty good upgrade. But let's go back to that steering wheel for a second and let's go through its unusual quirks and features because there are many. One glance at this and you can see it is a very complicated steering wheel. There are now five spokes coming off it plus two shift paddles and these little circular controls at the bottom. A lot of stuff has been integrated into this steering wheel. Undoubtedly the quirkiest stuff are those little 
little circles at the bottom, which are actually controls that have screens on them. Take a look at this. Over on the left, you can adjust the exhaust note. You can go from regular to sport by pressing this little button. This little circular area has a screen that actually shows what you have selected. Now, directly below that, there's another button. That one lets you go between automatic mode and manual mode, where you're shifting with the paddles, and you can select that with that little button. And again, the little circular screen tells you which mode you're in. More interesting, though, is the screen circle over on the other side, which allows you to adjust your drive modes. And there are quite a few drive modes in this vehicle. Now, your standard ones are Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. Most different vehicles have that. And you can see as you adjust through them, the center screen tells you which mode you've gone into and shows a little graphic to correspond with your new change drive mode. Pretty simple. But there are also some more unusual modes. One is individual, where you can configure all different aspects of the car to fit whatever you want personally. So you can have like comfort suspension, but racy throttle response and exhaust note, whatever you want, and that's configurable too. And there's also a wet mode for if you're driving this in snowy or rainy conditions. And there is also a race mode for if you're trying to take your family station wagon on the track. Now, in addition to these modes all being shown in the center screen, they are also shown on this circular dial screen on the steering wheel. And you can see as you rotate through the modes, the screen in this dial actually changes each time with each individual mode to let you know what mode you're in. And I especially like the display for race mode, which shows like a checkered flag in red to really confirm how racy it is, and wet mode, which just shows a snowflake. There are many different modes to this vehicle. Now, it's worth noting that you can also adjust all of these things in the center console, which is also a short reach away from driver or passenger. This button here will turn on or off the sport exhaust. You just press it and it goes on. This button here will go between drive and manual mode. You just press that and you can switch between the two. And this little switch here goes through your drive modes, all of your sport, comfort, etc. You can do all of that here in the center console. But why would you when you have such cool little button screen dial things mounted right on the steering wheel? <laughs> Still a little bit redundant. But anyway, next I want to move on to the infotainment system because like I said, this is new updated for 2021. This is the latest version of Mercedes MBUX infotainment system, and it is fantastic. I have raved about how great MBUX is in a lot of different reviews of new Mercedes-Benz models, and that is certainly true here too. You get a big screen, ultra high resolution, tremendously responsive if you use it as a touchscreen. You can see it responds instantly to any input I give it, just like a smartphone. It feels that quick, that responsive, and that easy to use. Or you can now use it with this updated controller. Like I was saying earlier, this controller here in the center is new for 21. It's a little easier to use, a little smaller, a little slicker, and it makes it just a little bit simpler to control the system. If you don't want to use the touchscreen, or if you don't want to reach that far, you can control everything from this controller here in the center too. And you still have controls for most infotainment items on the steering wheel as well. This little upper spoke on the right side of the steering wheel controls the infotainment system to a large degree. So if you don't want to reach anywhere, you just want to use your thumbs that are already on the steering wheel, you can do that too. So you have multiple different ways of controlling this fantastic infotainment system. And it's the same story with the gauge cluster in this car, which is also a very large screen. You can see pretty much mirrors the size of the center screen, but directly in front of the steering wheel for your gauges. This too is a fantastic system, tremendously easy to use and very configurable. You can see you can adjust all different components of this screen. So over on the left inside this circle, you can go through various different items showing different information and displays. Same deal in the center, you have a wide range of different options you can choose from to see various displays, readouts, etc. And even over on the right, all very configurable so you can have it showing exactly what you want to see at any given time. And you can even make the center display full screen. So if you want the map to be larger than this, for example, you can have a full screen map and everything else is kind of minimized so the map is directly in your line of sight. And you can do that full screen trick with various different displays in this infotainment system so you can have all sorts of things display large, small, whatever you want. Very, very configurable and easy to use. And in addition to being easy and intuitive, these infotainment systems also have some rather unusual quirks and some interesting features they control like panel heating. Check this out. In your car, you can turn on the heated seats and then your back and your butt are warmed. Pretty standard. But in this car, you can also turn on panel heating. And when you do that, when you activate the heated seats, the door panel 
armrest and the center armrest will also heat up. So not just your back and butt are warmed, but also your arms if you place them on the armrest, which is a wonderful luxury touch. And how about this? This infotainment system has a feature called automatic seat adjustment. If you input your height, the seat will automatically adjust to where it thinks your optimal seating position should be. So rather than you adjusting the seat to fit perfectly where you think you should sit, the car is smarter than you and it will tell you where it thinks you should sit if you use that feature. I also absolutely love the different themes of this infotainment system. You can see there are three right here. This is classic and it looks like a fairly classic display, I guess. Or you can switch into sport, which frankly looks like the same as classic, except with a different kind of racier color. It looks a little more exciting. Or you can switch into a display mode called super sport, which is just ridiculous. It almost looks like a caricature, what a child would think that like a race car gauge cluster display should have. But that is one of your display options if you want it, if you want to go into super sport. <laughs> and almost feel like you're piloting an airplane in your gauge cluster screen. And how about this? AMG Track Pace. And if you tap on it, well, it's rather interesting. There is a lap timer function where you can select from a local racetrack or input your own and then time your laps and compare them. A lot of performance cars have that, but this takes it quite a bit further. There's also a drag race function where you can measure all sorts of things, including your quarter mile time and your acceleration, zero to 60, zero to 120. You can set what you're measuring and then the car will measure it. It's almost like goading you into making some real high speed runs and measuring. This app app even allows you to measure your braking. If for some reason you want to slam on the brakes and see just how fast you slow down, you can do that in this AMG Track Pace app that measures all sorts of track and performance driving. And of course, there's more than just that. You also have like a generic AMG performance app. You can tap on that and get any readout you want basically while you're driving along. It'll show you exactly how much power is going to each wheel. It'll show you exactly how many G-forces you're pulling. It'll show you a real real-time readout of your horsepower, torque, even kind of geeky things like transmission temperature, you can find all of that in here. But just in case you thought this car was going a little too much to the high performance side, it still has some more tricks up its sleeve to remind you that it's a luxury car, including the ambient lighting color. You can go in here and adjust the interior ambient lighting color to various different pre-named, pre-selected colors. You can even choose like the color mix that mixes all sorts of different colors. So you're driving along at night and you're in interior mood ambient lighting is lit up in whatever colors you have desired. This car also has the cool feature some new Mercedes models do where you adjust the climate control temperature and the ambient lighting briefly adjusts to correspond. So you make it hotter and you can see it turns red, the ambient lighting to correspond with additional heat. If you adjust the climate control to make it cooler, you can see the ambient lighting briefly turns blue to correspond with the cooler temperature input you've just given, warmer, cooler, red, blue, that is kind of a neat little quirk of new Mercedes models. But anyway, next we move on to the back seat in the new AMG wagon. And I gotta say, it is quite comfortable and roomy back here. I put the front seat back further than the position where I would actually sit, and I still have room back here. Obviously good headroom and decent knee and leg room in the back too. It's pretty large if you wanna carry rear passengers. And part of the reason for that is the excellent design of the front seats. The front seats are quite comfortable when you're sitting in them. You can see nicely bolstered, luxurious. They look like comfortable seats and they are. But you can also see in back, they're designed to kind of curve in exactly where your knees would be for a rear passenger in order to maximize to the millimeter the amount of space that rear passengers have sitting in back. So it's a pretty nice design balancing comfort of front passengers and interior space of rear passengers. Now, other interesting quirks in the back seat. For one, a little disappointing, you don't have climate controls back here. You can see on the back of the front center console, you do have climate vents. So there is air blowing back here, but it's whatever the front passengers select, you can't actually adjust it from the rear, which is kind of disappointing given the price point of this car. I will say though, I do like the power outlet situation back here. You pop open this panel and you have a cigarette lighter style outlet and a household style power outlet, which is pretty nice. I like seeing USB ports in the back of cars for charging devices, but a household outlet is even better. It's rare you find it, but this car has it. Would have been nice to have a 
third prong though, a ground for plugging in a wider range of devices, but it's still pretty good and pretty nice feature to see in the back seat. You also have sunshades back here, built-in sunshades. You pull on this little tab, you can lift up the sunshade and then place it on these little hooks to block out sun coming in through the rear window. That's nice to have. You have a little baby, an infant, they're sensitive to the sun. You don't have to go buy some sunshade or a wrap over the window. Instead, you just lift up the built-in sunshade and your life is easy. Which, by the way, helps to prove that this really is a usable, practical family car. It might be an ultra high performance, big power V8, but it's also a station wagon and it has station wagon practicality. And the new AMG wagon status as a practical family car is especially obvious in back when you open up the tailgate and take a look at the cargo area, which is really, really big. This is a lot bigger than the cargo area you will find in some crossovers, even similar size crossovers. It is large, it's deep, and it's reasonably tall, even though this doesn't have the height of an SUV. It's a big cargo space, and you have even more storage under the floor. You lift this up and you can see a little extra storage under here if you don't want some smaller or more fragile items to be rolling around, you can stick them under there. You also have this little plastic thing, which is a cargo like divider storage system. You can take that out and set it up and again, kind of keep stuff from rolling around in the back. It's a very practical cargo area. And of course it gets even more practical if you want it. This little switch over on the side of the cargo area, you pull that and then the seat automatically folds down instantly. So you have more space. And of course there's another one of those switches over on the other side. You pull that, the seat folds down and now you have even more cargo space back here basically an enclosed Mercedes-Benz pickup truck with 600 horsepower. But when you get into the back of this car, just as much as you're reminded that it is a reasonable, rational, practical family vehicle, you are also quick to discover that it isn't. Because when you look around back here, you see a massive rear diffuser coming out the bottom of the bumper and quad exhaust pipes all surrounded by carbon fiber. Little indicator that this is something different from a normal family wagon. And of course, the quad exhausts sound pretty good coming from this V8. Take a listen. But anyway, since we're back here, a few other interesting things to note. For one, the rear of this latest updated AMG wagon, not really different from the rear of the previous model. There might be some subtle, small changes, but nothing major, nothing you'd notice, nothing like what's up front, which is a lot more obvious. Also interesting around back, the rear view camera, the reversing camera, it's not anywhere back here. You look around, you can't find it. Even above the license plate where you'd normally see it, it isn't anywhere. Where's the backup camera? The answer is it pops out only once you shift the car into reverse. It's hidden until then, and then it comes out and shows you what you need to see. You go back into drive, and the camera goes away back to being hidden. A couple benefits to this. One, kind of cleans up the rear of the car. You don't have to have a camera sticking out. And also, if you're in cold climates, with a lot of snow, ice, whatever, the backup camera can get pretty dirty, but keeping it hidden most of the time while you're driving ensures that it stays clean, which is a nice touch. But anyway, since I was talking about the exhaust note a minute ago, let's get back to that. Let's talk about the engine. This car uses a four liter twin turbo V8, just like most Mercedes AMG models do now. And it makes a little over 600 horsepower, 603 to be exact, which is a massive figure for any vehicle, but especially a midsize station wagon. Now, the interesting thing about this powertrain, aside from the fact that it makes so much power, is what happened to this engine about six, eight, ten months ago in Mercedes-Benz lineup. One day, without warning or explanation, all Mercedes models that featured this engine were pulled off the market. They were no longer being shipped, being built, or being sold. They were just canceled without warning or explanation, and Mercedes never explained why. Now, there's a lot of theories out there about this. Some said chip shortage, but most people think it was more than that, probably going to a level of compliance. The engines weren't meeting emission standards or other regulatory challenges, and Mercedes had to instantly pull them off the market. It was a bizarre decision, unprecedented, very strange. Now, some cars equipped with this engine have already made their return after a hiatus of almost a year, but the E63 hasn't yet, and that is an 
interesting thing, especially for this car. Like I said, it was facelifted for the 21 model year, got some new tech, like I showed you a new look, and then it was canceled for the 22 model year. And that makes this an especially rare and uncommon vehicle. And it's helped shoot market prices for these 21 AMG wagons through the roof, since there's a possibility new ones aren't going to be made. Now, since I'm on the outside of the AMG wagon, I also want to talk through styling. I love how this car looks. I love it's subtle, it's beautiful, it's simple, it's a fantastic design. I really think the latest E-Class came out in 17 is the most beautiful E-Class ever. And that's saying something because there have been a lot of E-Classes and I've owned five. <laughs> I think this is the best one. And I especially love how the AMG wagon looks, particularly compared to rivals like the Audi RS6 Avant. I love the RS6 Avant, but it's got massive wheels, massive fender flares. They look cool, but they're pretty in your face. If you want a more subtle, performance wagon, which is kind of the point of a performance wagon, this is the car you want. Subtle, simple, clean. You don't know what it is until it's beating you. And I love that. And so those are the quirks and features of the new Mercedes AMG E63 wagon. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the 21 AMG E63 wagon. This car is one of my very favorites, probably my dream daily driver car. Uh, I owned an 07 E63 wagon and a 12 E63 wagon, and I really want the new one, but it's so expensive, and the car market today has made it even more challenging to get one. It hasn't depreciated like most of these usually do because of the chip shortage and the supply shortage and all this stuff. Now, one point I do wanna make uh, before I go any further, I didn't mention it earlier, but there is no third row seat in this vehicle. The regular E-Class station wagon still has a third row seat rear facing in the cargo area which I find to be very cool. The AMG version does not. There's various speculation about why. I've heard that the exhaust is too large to fit it. I've heard various different things. Not sure why it doesn't, but you can't get the third row in the AMG, only in the regular E-Wagon. So let's talk driving this car, starting with acceleration. <laughs> God, this car is so fast. It's just absolutely amazing. And this powertrain is generally agreed and regarded, including by me, to be one of the very best performance car powertrains in the entire car industry for a lot of really good reasons. For one thing, it's just so responsive. It doesn't matter where you are in the rev range. You put your foot down and it just goes. There's so much power and it's always available on tap and it's incredibly quick to go and find that power. There's no ringing this out to try to get power at the top of the rev range. There is just always power and always torque, and it is a fantastic, fantastic powertrain. Now, basically every AMG 63 vehicle has this engine now. In fact, I think it is every. Um, and, you know, they used to use a big naturally aspirated 6.2 liter V8. I had one of those cars, uh, and that was a great engine too, but this one's better. Everybody's talks about, oh, the death of the NA engine, oh, save the NA engine, screw that. This is the motor you want. It is so fast and so much fun to drive. But it's not just the powertrain that makes this car so exciting. You also have some other nice, oh God, the powertrain though is so good. But you also have some other nice stuff in here. One is the steering and handling aspect of this car. Now, I wanna make it clear, it doesn't handle like a sports car by any stretch. But I was always a little disappointed in my 07 AMG wagon and my 12 AMG wagon, they were quick to handle, especially compared to SUVs that a lot of people would be comparing them against but they were not really that great in terms of performance and handling. This car is on a different level. It's really, really sporty in terms of the way it handles and the way it feels on the road. And I think it really handles fantastically. The steering isn't as precise as some of the best sports cars. And you know, you feel more of the body, you feel more of the weight and the heft of the car. All that stuff is true, but it handles just great. It is excellent, even compared to the prior AMG wagon models, which I thought were all pretty good. But then we move on to comfort. This car is incredibly relaxed and comfortable and nice. If you have this in normal mode, frankly, even in sport mode, which I'm in right now, it's pretty comfortable and it's pretty nice to just sit in here and kind of chill. The seats are comfortable, like I mentioned earlier. They're well padded, well bolstered. They feel good. 
This car is just so perfect at being an all-rounder. You know, I'm in sport mode and I'm kind of gunning it here, but if I go to comfort mode, everything gets quieter, the suspension gets softer, and suddenly you can have, you know, I'm, a, little, a little diagram comes up saying I'm on four cylinders, and suddenly you can have like a pretty calm and relaxing experience in here, as opposed to a performancey one. The car is just the best all-rounder in the world. And so you have everything, a luxury car, a performance car, and a family car. The problem is you're paying for three cars. <laughs> you really are paying for a luxury car, performance car, and a family car. And that is really the issue with this vehicle. It's incredible and it's amazing and it's so cool, but it's as expensive as it would be given that it combines all these things. Truthfully though, I don't know how I can say anything other than I just love this car. There are no real drawbacks in my mind. There's no real faults. I think the RS6 is great, but I think this car has a little better performance. I think it's a little bit more powerful, but mostly you can, the powertrain is just more eager. I think this car handles about the same, maybe a little worse, but about the same. I think the tech is a little better in here and I think it's better looking. Um, and if I were to choose between the two, it's an amazing choice. They're two of the best cars on sale today, but I think even in spite of how much I love the RS6 wagon and how much I've been hoping that that would come to America, I think I would still choose the E63. I just think it's a, it's got the edge just a little bit um, over the RS6. And frankly, I think this is one of the best all-round cars ever made. And so that's the 2021 Mercedes AMG E63 S Wagon. This is a really special car. The perfect combination of luxury and practicality and performance and technology. And I love these. They're incredibly expensive, but they are fantastic. And I'm thrilled that I had the chance to spend the day with my daily driver dream car. Anyway, now it's time to give this AMG Wagon a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 72 out of 100, the exact same score as the old model. That's because the 2021 is updated for sure, but not quite enough to move the needle in any one category, though of course I prefer the updated model to the 2018 version I tested four years ago. As for the new E63 wagon against the RS6 Avant, well, it's a close call. The RS6 is amazing, but I think the E63 has a slight upper hand in terms of technology, styling, and performance. Still, both of these vehicles are pretty much the best all-around cars on the planet. 